All right, I guess the um, first thing we'll start from the beginning with your uh, college career. Mm -hmm. And I guess at Oklahoma State, just looking at those numbers and what you're, you were able to accomplish, what was it like, what was college, the college experience at OSU like for you to be on top like that? Well, you know, uh, Oklahoma State, when I went there, was probably one of the top five baseball schools in the country at that time. They've gone to the World Series three years in a row. Um, um, I really only had football scholarships to coming out of California, and I really wanted to play baseball. My mm -hmm. passion was baseball. I mean, I liked playing football, but my passion was baseball. So um, to get to Oklahoma State and to play for, you know, an organization like that was uh, was tremendous. I mean, I think it kind of got me ready for, you know, where I was going. You know, as far as dealing with the press, you know, yeah. you know, that that school is a very big fish in a very small pond. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they treated us like we, you know, we were like, you know, major league stars. You know, so um, it was great. I mean, I wouldn't change it in the world. You know, um, as far as the records and all that, I mean, that, that was kind of secondary. You know, I mean, playing for Gary was. It was all about trying winning the national championship. You know, that's all he ever talked about. That's all he ever, you know, ate, drank, slept. You know, national championship. So that's all we really thought about. I mean, all the numbers were secondary. Yeah. Did you think you mentioned you wanted to play football? Did you think then you would have the success you did at OSU, such vast success like that, to where you probably arguably the greatest college baseball player? Did you think you'd get there that quickly? No, you're not really. You know, I mean, I, I was fortunate. My two older brothers, who were eight years older than me, um, my oldest brother Tony played uh, some minor league baseball. Played five or six years in minor leagues, and my dad played for the old Brooklyn Dodgers. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so baseball was in our blood. So I was always the little guy running around. You know, <laughs> shagging, getting extra swings, and um, you know, I always knew I was pretty good when I was younger. You know, I always knew I was you know a pretty good player. Um, Never did I think that I was, you know, going to set all those records and, you know, they'd, they'd still be standing 20-something years later. Yeah. yeah. Did you think, did you see yourself as a baseball player, as a slugger, as someone who would just hit a lot of horns? Is that always the role you kind of envisioned, or did you all have a different role for yourself set out initially? Uh, you know, as, as far as I can remember, uh -huh. I always hit the ball further than everybody. Really? I just, <laughs> even when I was in Little League, you know, I just, it just I always did. I, I, I've always said, and I think a lot of people, that, Playing the major leagues will tell you it's a gift. Yeah, I mean you got to have some sort of uh, work ethic and, and to make it better, but it's a gift. And I think that I had the gift at a young age to hit a baseball a real long way. You get drafted by Montreal, and then ironically, where you are now, you refuse to play in the minor leagues. Yeah. What was the decision behind that? Well, behind that? I mean that's kind of a, a different story because uh, it really that's not what happened. Okay. Um, my uh, my agent Bucky Woy at that time. Um, we only asked that I would get an opportunity to go to big league spring training to see what I was going to have to do in order to play in the big leagues. Okay, so that's what y'all were Yeah, I, cause I, and it was real important to me because I wanted to see, you know, what, what do I have to do in order to play with these guys? And yeah. If I don't go play in a game with them and don't rub shoulders with them, how am I going to know? Yeah. So, uh, and Montreal said, there's no way you're going to big league spring training. There's no way you're doing, you know. And he said, look, you, you can send me down, but I want to go to big league spring training for at least two weeks to know where I was going to be. Yeah. And they would not do it. And we said, well, we're not signing. And then they finally ended up trading me to the Rangers, and the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was their reason for not sending you down? Did they ever give you a reason for why we're not going to send well, you down? Well, I'm going to tell you, I had like, I had like the greatest spring training. Like I ended up hitting like I don't know eight home runs, and I, had, I led the team in home runs and RBIs and extra base hits. I mean, I had a great spring. Mm -hmm. uh, I played in twenty something games, and I played real well. And I don't think they had any choice. You know, they were rebuilding. Um, I think they needed uh, to sell some tickets. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that you know I I kind of rolled up in a very good situation. You know, where they had a lot of young players. They were rebuilding. Was this with Texas? Yeah, this okay. was with Texas, yeah. So I think that's um, why it was so easy for me to go from college to the big leagues. I think it was a perfect situation. I was very fortunate to be in a good situation with the Rangers. So when you look at the two Texas teams, you also play, play with the Astros in Texas. Is it right. Texas you remember more fondly or more? Oh, no. I mean, I love playing. You know, in 92 when I played for Art Howe, Art Howe was uh, our hitting coach for the Rangers. Mm -hmm. So it was great. You know, I already got the, uh, the Astro job. Okay. And so... Uh, Rudy Jaramillo, who was in the uh, Ranger organization, got the big league job with the Astros. So it was great for me because I knew everybody there. Artie was a manager. Rudy I was very familiar with from the Rangers. So um, I love playing in Houston. I love playing in the old dome. Uh, <laughs> 
it was a lot of fun. I mean, I did. I, I love playing. My years in Texas, I'm very fond of. Um, going back to Montreal, of my initial question, did they give you a reason for not sending you down at that time? You know, uh, you know, they just they just were not going to let me. You know, it just wasn't done. There was no reason. I mean, yeah. I was never given a reason, or my, my agent Bucky was never given a reason, and that's why we were so adamant. I mean, if you can't give me a reason, then there really isn't a good reason why. Yeah. <laughs> give me yeah. an opportunity to go see what's you know if I can play with these guys or not. So I was. We were never given a good reason though. Okay, so you quickly just as well as you just in. Uh, college ball, you pretty much made the same seamless transition into uh, the pros. Mm -hmm. You mentioned you just always could hit. What is your what was your approach to hitting, or how did you approach that craft to where, uh, of the game? Well, you know, when I was when I was younger, I, I think that I was um, um, I didn't really think. Yeah. You know, I just went and played. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I didn't. Um, you know, I wasn't really in awe of who I was facing or, you know, I mean, I, when I, my first year, I remember facing Tom Seaver and I remember facing guys that Tommy John, you know, guys that, you know, you watched as a kid, you know, Tommy John playing for the Yankees and Tom Seaver playing for the Mets. And, you know, I just, I just went out and played, um, you know, I, I, I don't know if you want to call that cocky. I don't think yeah. it was cocky. I think it was, I had self-confidence and I thought I could play. I really struggled my first month of the season I remember I really struggled and but I remember that I was learning along that month of April while I was struggling you know and I was saying okay okay I, I'm getting this I'm getting better and I remember Bobby Valentine uh, I was in Toronto and he wanted to go eat dinner with me and that's like the kiss of death and going oh god you know I'm hitting about a buck 68 and you know but I but I know that I'm getting better and I'm learning I'm yeah. learning from my mistakes and so Bobby having a day goes hey man he goes you know, what are we going to do here? And I said, look, Bobby, I said, give me another couple of weeks. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm learning. I'm making adjustments. I make this. And then May, I played real well. I ended up hitting over 400, I think, in May, and you know, the rest is history. But, you know, you have to, there is a, a, a barometer there as a player. I mean, everybody's going to go through a learning curve. Yeah. Every player, I don't care how good you are in the minor leagues or how good you were in college, you're going to go through a learning curve. And then it's after you go through that learning curve on whether you're gonna you're gonna stick around or you're gonna you know or it's gonna be the end of your career mm -hmm. too. So um, I was very fortunate to do my learning curve, you know, with a good group of people. I had a good bunch of older guys like Larry Parrish and Toby Hara, and Pete O'Brien and Nolan Ryan. Yeah, no, Nolan wasn't there yet. Uh, Charlie Huff um, had a real good crew of older guys that really didn't shun me. They actually took me in and kind of Buddy Bell was there, you know, yeah. and taught me. You know, just sit in the training room and listen to these guys talk and learn the game and, you know, uh, learn what pitchers are trying to do to you and, and stuff like that. Start playing the game a little more mentally than physically. What was the toughest thing for you to just do at the major league? After you, the learning curve, you mentioned learning curve, what was the toughest thing you had to do? The toughest was travel. Really? Yeah, the travel is, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, travel is really nice. Yeah. You, know, you travel on, you know, charter flights and, uh, you know, you eat really good food and, you know, and all that, but it's, you know, I mean, you, you play one, you know, you just, you're playing every day. Yeah. I mean, just literally, you know, you're in Seattle one day and then, you know, you're in uh, Oakland the next day and then the next day you're flying to the East Coast and, you know, you wake up in a hotel room sometimes and you got to call down the front desk and see what city you're in because yeah. you don't remember, I mean, literally. So, you know, playing that many games and traveling that much was a big adjustment for me because in college we played 70-something games. Yeah. I never played more than 70-something games, you know, so uh, playing 162 was a, a big adjustment in travel. And I threw you into the World Series with the Phillies. What was mm. the most memorable? What do you take from that year? What uh, it, was, it was probably the best year of my career. Right. Yeah, because I always wanted to, always wanted to win a championship. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to be in a, a in the postseason. I always wanted to be in a World Series. So, for me, you know, it was a fulfillment of my whole career. Mm -hmm. I mean, I played eight years, and you know, that was the year where I finally got to the World Series and, and, and finally got in the postseason. To see that, I mean, it was just it was. The greatest part of my career is what every player, you know, strives to be, yeah. and, and, and where to go. You know, I mean, so by far the best year I ever had playing, the best group of guys I ever played with. Um, you know, winning always makes everything great. Yeah. You know, winning is yeah. always fun. Um, a lot of fond moments. You know, I played in a lot of places, but it's just something about when you win. You know, you remember a lot of things about that year. Whereas, you know, when you finish, you know, third or fourth or you know, second, or you know, you, you don't remember a lot of that journey. But when you're when you get to the playoffs and the postseason, you remember that whole journey, and you remember a lot of 
a lot of things about it, so it's it's still pretty fresh in my mind. Yesterday when we talked, you mentioned about chemistry and that's the way to yeah. go to team. Is that a large part? Does that come from that Phillies experience? Yeah, you? you know, I, I was fortunate enough, you know, to be in the postseason with the Phillies, and then uh, I got traded to the Orioles, and being in the postseason with the Orioles, um, um, you learn real quick on what that winning chemistry is, yeah. and it's about the group of guys. It's about the people you bring in. Um, it's not necessarily numbers. I mean, that Philly team, I mean, we, we had Lenny Dykes, who might have been, you know, an all-star. I had Darren Dalton, who, you know, might have been an all-star, but the rest of us were just journeyman players who who just kind of just, we all fit. Yeah. You know, we had Jim Eisenreich and Wes Chamberlain and Mickey Morandini and Kevin Stocker and Dave Hollins. Not, not an all-star team. Yeah. But, I mean, we, when we took the field, I mean, we played the best together. I mean, we took down the mighty Atlanta Braves, who had all the All-Stars, yeah. who nobody gave us a chance. So, to me, you build a team not with numbers. You build a team with, with people, and that's, that's... You injured your career with the Astros. Did you, at that time, did you realize you were on your way out? Or how, how, did, how did the realization that your playing days might be over soon, how did that come? Or well, I, I had a, a, a dough for a baseball, and... Uh, I had a bad shoulder injury, and I went and got it fixed. And um, I thought my career was completely done. When I was tried. This? Uh, this was in uh, 90, 99. Yeah, I was with uh, I was with um, the Astros in ninety eight, and then Sandy Johnson called me, uh, who was actually used to be the assistant GM for the Rangers when I was when I was a young young kid. He was mm -hmm. the one who organized that trade. From Montreal there, okay. and he wanted me to come play for the Diamondbacks in '99. So I went to the uh, I went to the Diamondbacks and uh, ended up in Triple A Tucson with the Diamondbacks. Um, uh, did make the team uh, out of spring training, and uh, uh, the Astros called me and wanted me back. So I went back to the Astros. They told me to go to Triple A for a few games, and I ended up uh, destroying my shoulder, mm. dying for baseball. So I knew when I when my shoulder went, I knew I was done. Yeah. I was completely done. I mean, I, there was no, uh, and it was funny because I never had a major surgery in my whole career. Hmm. That ended my career. I yeah. mean, I just, I came back from it. Uh, I actually went to spring training with the Padres in 2002, but it just wasn't the same. I mean, I just, I couldn't do the things I used to do. I couldn't, ball didn't come out of my hand. The bat didn't, you know, I didn't have that same bat speed. I just wasn't the same person. I just, I wasn't willing, I wasn't willing to go out there and embarrass myself yeah. anymore. So I knew I was done physically. How was it on you, I guess, emotionally really coming to that point? You know, it was uh, it, it was probably easier for me than most because I was 38, okay. 39 years old. Yeah. I knew I was at the end of my career. I'd already thought about it, you know, for several years. I knew physically I wasn't the same player. I couldn't do the things I used to do. So it was a little bit easier for me to walk away from the game. You know, I, I think that if I'd have been younger or had a career-ending injury when I was, you know, 30 yeah. or something, I think it would have been a lot tougher. Is it so when you realized you were done, uh, I guess a lot of ex-players going to broadcasting, what was it about coaching or hitting that kind of made you pursue that? Well, that you know, I, 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 several managers I played for always told me that they thought that I would be a good manager. Mm -hmm. Sparky Anderson was one who I, who I tremendous, respect tremendously. Um, Buck Walter was one in, in, with the Diamondbacks. Um, uh, Jim Fergozzi was another one. He says, you know, when you get out, you ought to you ought to keep the uniform on. You know, they, a lot of them told me that, and I never really thought about. Because as a player, you don't want to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to become a coach. Yeah. You know, I'm still, I want to play, man. You know, you don't want to think about that. So, at the end of my row, um, I had an opportunity. A buddy of mine, Mitch Williams, who was managing the Atlantic City Surf as an independent team uh, in Atlantic City and uh, the Atlantic League, uh, needed a coach. So um, I thought, well, here's my great chance. You know, I don't have to burn one of my friends who's an affiliated ball, you know, to see if I really, you know, I didn't want to go in affiliated ball and be a coach for a month and then say I don't like it and leave them hanging. Yeah. You know, not without a coach. So this was a perfect scenario for me to see if I really liked it. And I just, I had a blast. Love working with the kids. And still love putting the uniform on, even though I wasn't playing all that often. Uh, it was great. So that kind of fueled me into you know, me getting with the Tigers and then eventually Mark Schuster gave me the opportunity to manage Grandpa Arrow. It seemed you, so you were with affiliate, you coached an affiliate and then you're in, independent. It seems like you realize, which I don't think a lot of people do, that it's a different type of player for an independent ball than you might get for an affiliated ball. Absolutely. I mean, it is. You really need your players to become part of the community. Mm -hmm. 
Um, an affiliated ball, they, you know, they, they can, they don't care. Yeah. You know, they, all they care about is how many hits they get that day and whether they're moving up or moving down or, you know, what the pitch, you know, pitchers only care about their ERAs and their strikeouts and their yeah. walks and all that stuff. You know, here you really have to be, become part of the community because it's the community that supports everything. Yeah. If the, if the community don't come out, <laughs> I mean, you know, we don't, you know, we don't exist. Yeah. So my players understand that. It's a privilege to be here, and, and, and you're gonna you're gonna be proud of that that Laredo, you know, emblem on the front of your uniform, and you're gonna go out and do the things necessary to make sure that stays here for a long time. You're gonna sign those autographs. You're gonna go talk at schools. You're gonna do everything that you're supposed to be doing. So this remains here. So the people that come after you, that have that dream to get into the big leagues, has the same opportunity you have. How was it? It seems like you like the independent way better than the affiliate would that be fair to say it absolutely like you do? I, I do yeah absolutely because uh, one um obviously you want to develop yeah and an affiliated ball they want to develop but i believe that you can develop and win at the same time i think they both go hand in hand uh, in independent baseball you can manage to win a game mm -hmm. you know in, in in affiliate ball you can't because sometimes there are guys that they've paid millions of dollars for yeah. That have to get their at bats. That have to get, you know, guy could be on the mound and, and giving up uh, seven runs, but he's not at his pitch quota yet, and he's going to give up twelve more runs. You know what I'm saying? So, you really can't manage to win a game, and I don't think that's healthy for a ball club. Mm -hmm. So, in independent baseball, you can manage to win, and it's, it's awesome, uh, and, and you can develop too. Um, you know, we develop a lot of guys. I mean, we, you know, I, I'm pretty proud of the fact of what we did in Grand Prairie, we moved a lot of guys back into affiliated ball, yeah. which is part of it. Yeah. You know, it's just part of the whole plan. When you talk to the younger players as a manager, from your major league experience, what's what some of the main strengths you emphasize to them about how to get to eventually where you were? Well, I mean, it's uh, I think the one biggest thing is, is I don't think kids realize today how hard you have to work to get there. It's not something that's given to them. I mean, you have to put your time in. Mm -hmm. You have to come to the park every day and work, there's something to work on. There's one part of your game that you can work on every day to become a better player that may get you out of here. And that's the one message I have every day. There's something you can work on today to become a better player to get out of here and get back into affiliated baseball. And that's the message I try and send all of them. I make sure that they're there early and that I'm there and my staff's available for them to help them get better and work on whatever they need to work on to get back to affiliated ball. Okay, I want to ask you uh, one thing. In 2007, you were named in the Grimsley affidavit. Yeah, yeah I remember what, that. Yeah, I guess uh, not for a steroid user, but for amphetamines. Yeah. What did you have? Did, do you have any comment toward that? Or no, what? I mean, I, I never. I, you know, a funny comment about that, and it was just a comment, and I don't know. I never played with Grimsley. Yeah. I mean, I never played on the same team as yeah. him, so I don't know why he would make those comments. So I just, I just basically just, you know, didn't yeah. answer. It, it, it wasn't worth answering because it was. I don't know why he would say that. Did it bother you at all? Uh, it bothered me a little bit, but it, it, it you know, people do things that they and say things they shouldn't have. But I mean, I don't know how he would have any comment about I me. Mean, we never played together. I mean, he can comment about the guys, some of the guys, because he played with them. So yeah, I have no idea. When you look at the game today, and you look at the Bonds and the Clemens and stuff, what do you think about today's today's game as it is? As of right now? Yeah, as like the state uh, of the game right now. Uh, I, think the, I think the game is great. I mean, I think there's a lot of good things about the game. Um, um, I think, you know, that baseball, you know, took a turn there during all the, the problems it had, you know, the steroid era, as yeah. they per se call it. And uh, um, I'm glad that's over with because there's a lot of great things going on in baseball. There's mm -hmm. a lot of great players out there. There's a lot of good things going on. I just wish that – I'm glad that that's kind of been, you know, we're kind of over that now, and we're talking about what the, what the good things are about baseball and the great players like, you know, Pujols or yeah. Matt Holliday or, you know, you're talking about, you know, uh, Cabrera in Detroit. I mean, there's a lot of great players there that I think aren't getting the attention they need or, or, or deserve because of all the stuff that's gone on, you know, with the, the steroid era and all that. So I'm glad that's in the past. From a fan's perspective, do you see how they may cast doubts? Like, for example... Pujols may be clean, for all we know. So may Mauer. Right. But because of what's going on, do you ever think about the fans' perception of the game or what they mean? Well, I mean, you know, the, you know, fans are fickle. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, you can't really fight that. Yeah. You know, you got people that like you and, and enjoy it, and you're going to have people that don't like you, and you can't fight that. I mean, you can't. 
all you can be is who you are. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, I mean, uh, to me, you know, you're innocent until proven guilty. And to me, I got to believe that, you know, full host is clean. You yeah. know, I got to believe now is clean. They, they have testing now that they yeah. used to not have. I mean, uh, I don't think that those guys can hide anything anymore which I think is great. I mean, I think the game is back to being pure. I think it's the way it should be. And um, I think baseball is, is up and coming again, getting more popular now that all this steroid era is gone. It do.